Alabama voters will be headed to the polls on Tuesday, June the 3rd. We have a Republican primary and at the top of the ticket is Governor Robert Bentley. Thank you for joining us today and uh, you've accomplished a lot in the first uh, term and why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're most proud of. Well, I, thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you for letting me be on with you. And uh, uh, let me say to our, uh, uh, our viewers out there how much I appreciate them. And uh, the opportunity that I've had uh, to serve as governor of the state, it's been a great opportunity and I've loved every minute of it. Uh, and, I, I, and I first want to thank them for allowing me to be their governor because I, I think that uh, we don't thank the people enough. This is the people's office and uh, I want them to know how much I appreciate it. You know, when we came in office uh, in 2010, well, we came in in 2011, elected in 2010, uh, Alabama was basically broke. Uh, all of our rainy day funds were exhausted. Uh, I had no money to uh, recruit industries into the state. Stimulus dollars, which had artificially propped up our government for the four years before, three to four years before, it was all gone. So really, we had uh, a decision to make. We, we needed more money. Uh, we had a decision to make whether or not we were going to raise taxes or whether or not we were going to streamline government and make it, make it more efficient uh, and make it run more like a business. Uh, that's what I chose. Uh, I did not want to raise taxes on the families of the state. That, you, can, you can cover up things with money, uh, but you can't really change things unless uh, we're, we're in a situation like we were in that you had to make tough decisions. Uh, so we decided that what we would do is, is to make government more efficient and, and make it run more like a business. We, we actually cut the size of government. We've got some great state employees. We really do. But we allowed people to retire and uh, we had a hiring freeze and we've reduced the size of government probably by five to six thousand people. Uh, and that's, that's saved a considerable amount of money and in fact what we've done over the last three and a half years, we have actually saved the state of Alabama annually now, we have passed this, a billion dollars a year. Out of our $8 billion budget, we have saved a billion dollars a year just by simple things like refinancing bonds, uh, changing the way people retire for our new hires, uh, not replacing the people that uh, retired. Now, we, we can get so low that we don't have enough people, but we're not there yet. Um, we're still able to deliver all the essential services of government and so things are, are running well. Uh, the, the most important thing that I, that I tried to do was to, to organize uh, our economic development teams in the state because recruiting industries, recruiting jobs to the state was the most important thing. People have to have a job. Our unemployment rate was 9.3 when we came in office. Uh, it's now the lowest in the southeast. It's uh, in the low sixes right now. And uh, we have been able to work hard, recruit uh, industries into the state, and we've been able to announce over 50,000 good, high-paying jobs uh, for the state of Alabama. And that's not counting small businesses, which account for 400,000 jobs uh, that, uh, that are out there in, in the small businesses. So, you know, small businesses actually create most of your jobs. Uh, but We've streamlined things and we, we've made things work better and uh, without raising taxes on the people of the state and I think that is, that's very important. Uh, one of the things I'm proud of, stop, I, I'm very proud of our road system that uh, we're getting started. Uh, we call it the A-TRIP program. Every county in the state, whether they can match with federal dollars or not, every county is going to get money. We need to repair the roads and bridges, especially in the rural areas of the state. Uh, so we have 1,122 projects that have been approved, a billion dollars using Garvey bonds, and this will be, these bonds could be issued at 2.5%, be paid for with future federal dollars over the next 10 or 12 years, but we can put them to work immediately, and we can put more companies to work, more people to work, but we can repair the roads and bridges in, in this state. I know the farmers are extremely proud of your improvements of the farm to market roads, but you've also been busy uh, trying to help them to protect uh, their property and uh, you've made some efficiencies in uh, the uh, rural crime. Well, one of the things that we've done is, is in trying to reorganize government is we have we've really consolidated a lot of our law enforcement. And even before that goes into effect, which will be January of 2015, 
I told Spencer Collier, who will be in charge of that, that we needed a rural crimes unit because we did not have anybody out there investigating rural crimes. Just simply didn't have the money to do it. Uh, he set up this unit and they have done an extremely fantastic uh, job right now of, of, of finding what's going on out there. And anyone that's watching today, uh, if they have problems, they need to get in touch with this rural crimes unit. Uh, this is something that, that I'm very proud of. It's, it's, this is the type of thing that we need to do in government. Government is supposed to really support the people and, and help the people that we represent. You mentioned uh, small businesses and farmers are small businessmen. We're all looking for uh, good employees. You've really made some uh, really uh, sweeping changes in education reform as far as helping career tech and training folks for, uh, to be good workers. Well, one of the things that I saw when I came in also is we needed some more organization in our economic development. But I realized that 25% uh, of the jobs in this state are either related to uh, agriculture or to forestry. And uh, that's a lot of jobs. Uh, and in fact, it's really the major employer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were part, uh, agriculture and forestry was part of our, our Accelerate Alabama plan, which concentrated on 11 different industries. But we need trained workers. Uh, you know, I also I saw that 98% uh, of students who belong to FFA graduate from high school. So if you can get a student interested in something, whether it's electricity or whether it's plumbing, whether it's uh, agriculture, whatever it is, if they're interested in it, they're going to graduate from high school. But they need technical training. To be a farmer today, it, it's not just being able to run a tractor like I can do when I bush hog. You know, there's a lot to it. You gotta be a business person, you're a small business or a large business. I mean, these are, these are large businesses, many of them. And, and you have to understand that, you have to understand science, math, there's so many things that you have to understand to be a mod modern farmer today. Uh, and so we need skilled workers. And our College and Career Readiness Task Force that I set up, uh, we have concentrated on skilled workforce in the high school, in the two-year college system level, but even in the four-year college system level. Uh, and we brought in business and industry together with education so that they can tell each other what the needs are and work together. And uh, dual enrollment is part of that. And uh, we uh, have set up a, uh, a state uh, workforce advisory council. And this is made up of business people. Uh, who will tell education what the needs are out there. So I'm very proud of that. This, is, this helps me recruit jobs into the state. Well, we're proud of your accomplishments the first uh, four years, and I know that uh, that's the reason our members have endorsed you for re-election. And what is the one thing that you say that would be the most important in the next term that you'd like to accomplish? Well, I want to continue what we're doing right now. I want to continue the streamlining that we're doing at the present time and, and really making government more efficient because we, are, we have to be good stewards of the taxpayers' money and uh, make sure things run right, uh, make sure that everything is done correctly. Uh, transparency is very important to me. But I, I think that uh, we can continue to grow our economy and if we do that, uh, we always have plenty of taxes coming in as long as people are working. And, you know, we're not a rich state. We know that. But there are things that, that we need to do for our people that are very important. Uh, what we need to do is, is we need to educate our people and we need to give our children opportunity to become educated and we need to give them a job. That's how you lift people out of poverty. That's how you, you, if you recruit jobs like I did to Wilcox County, which is the poorest county in America, and, and next month we're going to be opening a plant there with 300 jobs that are high paying jobs and that will change that county because a new job has not come to that county as far as manufacturing since man stepped foot on the moon. Now that's a long time ago. And, and so that's how you lift people out of poverty. That's how you better the people of the state of Alabama. You educate them and you give them a job. You don't give them a government handout. 
Well, you've been working extremely hard the last four years, and if folks want to send you back to uh, be our next governor again for another four years, what can they do to get involved in your campaign? Well, uh, you know, obviously, uh, first of all, you need to tell your uh, friends and neighbors that we have, we're going to have an election in June. Uh, you know, I even have people ask me now, they'll say, uh, Governor, are you going to run again? And I'll say, I'm running right now. Uh, so we need to let people know that there is an election and it's important that people turn out. Uh, we, we want not just uh, a minimal turnout, we want a large turnout of people uh, to, to, uh, to support us. I, I hope they support us uh, and uh, I'm asking that they do and I'm asking for their vote. Uh, you know, there's money is important. I have to have money to run. Everyone has to have money to run. But let me tell you, the people are what's important. That's how I won before. I didn't have the most money. I had very little money. But I was able to connect with the people. And, and I want to continue to do that because I love the people of this state. We want to encourage our members to go out and get involved in the governor's campaign and go to the polls on Tuesday, June the 3rd to re-elect Governor Bentley.